this was actually one of the first hoverboard factories. They could produce maybe 15,000 hoverboards a month. On Amazon, I pushed them up in the first page, uh, bestseller actually. And you gotta remember, not just Amazon US, we're talking about Amazon Germany, Amazon France, Italy, and, uh, and UK. Meet Howard Tai, the man who claims credit for turning this anonymous Chinese hoverboard factory into a successful global business. I guess that's what they call me impressive of Amazon, because I teach them how to uh, sell on Amazon. His job, manipulate product listings on Amazon to boost his clients' sales. He's one of a number of self-proclaimed experts who are sometimes called the gurus. So there's different gurus for different things. Most of them, they do have their own traits, their own expertise. If you are an Amazon user, you may have noticed that sometimes it's really hard to figure out which products you should buy. Sometimes they all look the same. There are half a billion products all on one site, all vying for your attention. And the reality is, the vast majority of buyers would only click somewhere at the very top of the list. To get one of those spots, some sellers are ready to do anything. Fake reviews, artificial sales, and even bribes, all of which violate Amazon rules. Howard Tai has advertised illicit tactics to potential clients and charges thousands of dollars for his consulting, but says he does it mainly to defend sellers who have come under attack. Did I just get myself in trouble or anything? Did I do anything bad yet? The Wall Street Journal investigated for months around the world, and we came to China's tech and manufacturing hub to know more about the shadowy tactics used by online sellers here to beat their rivals. Okay, all right. We found that many sellers choose a radical approach to become one of the first listings you see when you search for a product they take down their competitors. So here is our uh, logistics center. As you can see, we have here uh, like a small assembly line. Amazon entrepreneur Meir Simhi moved from Israel to China 11 years ago. He says he has been the target of several attacks. Holiday seasons two years ago, just before Christmas, before Cyber Monday and Black Friday, I wake up in the morning one day, I look at my computer and I see zero sales. The reason was my main products were suspended. If a competitor wants to kill you, you just have to leave a few fake reviews to your product. Every day you wake up, the first thing you do is checking your reviews. You want to, to know if you're still in the business or not. Insiders say one reason attacks are so common is that they're extremely easy to pull off. The manipulators exploit Amazon's automated system. Returning a product and flagging it as dangerous or fake can trigger an immediate suspension. They will uh, purchase our products and then they will return it, claiming that the product is not as described. By returning the product, they will also increase the return rate, which will make Amazon suspend our product page. So then what do you do? Is your product just finished? In some cases, yeah, you cannot come back from this kind of attack. Amazon says it has put in place sophisticated systems to monitor attacks, and that genuine sellers are promptly allowed to list again. However, Simhi explains it can take weeks to be back online. It's a jungle. It happens all the time. For me, it can cost like tens of thousands US dollars a year. Another way sellers are violating Amazon's rules to try to boost their products is by writing fake reviews. Because the more positive review sellers have, the higher up their products will appear in the listings, making customers more likely to buy. When you look at the reviews for this product, you can see that it's very popular. But there's almost something too perfect about it. When you dig down and look into the reviews, you realize that while this product is a pair of headphones, the reviews describe a screen protector. It looks like a very clumsy piece of manipulation. In the case of these headphones, we emailed the seller, but he didn't reply. So, if you are an average buyer, 
how can you spot fake reviews from China? It's easy, according to Howard. He sat down in our studio to explain. It's just really about how it sounds like. As long as it sounds like it's from natively from、uh, the U.S. and it has some kind of slang and and doesn't have too much broken English, you know, then it should be a good good review. Anything short, I would think is really fake. It's awesome. Kind of sounds pretty fake to me. The question is, how do people actually generate thousands of allegedly fake reviews every day? During our investigation. We found that specialized websites control thousands of buyer accounts and use these to sell fake reviews to sellers based in China or anywhere else in the world. If Amazon discovers that a seller is using illicit tactics, Amazon will ban that account. However, many Chinese sellers have multiple selling accounts, so if they get banned from one, they'll just switch over to another, and if that one gets banned, they'll just make even more. On Amazon, in general, the more a vendor sells, the higher his ranking. So, to artificially boost sales, companies have commissioned third parties to buy their products. Some professionals told us they even sent empty boxes to random U.S. addresses and claimed genuine transactions. It's particularly widespread among producers of cheap generic products, like those on sale in this market. Here we are at one of Shenzhen's largest wholesale markets. I mean, it's just incredible what a range of electronics and how cheap all of this is. What we see here is that they're selling tons of generic electronic products. They're basically indistinguishable from one to the other. It's your cell phone charger versus another cell phone charger, and because these are all virtually indistinguishable, whoever can corner the market by making sure that their product rises to the top of the listings is going to get all the sales. So that gives sellers a huge incentive to manipulate the market and drive their product to the top. And finally, let's talk about corruption, which of course is totally against the rules. During the course of our reporting, we discovered that Amazon is investigating certain of its own employees to determine whether they are accepting bribes to give advantages to sellers. According to people familiar with or involved in these transactions, sellers paid bribes ranging from $80 to $2,000 to Amazon employees in China. To delete negative reviews, restore banned sellers' accounts, and obtain restricted Amazon data that will help them boost sales. So, what does Amazon say about all of this? They told us they are constantly monitoring the website for suspicious activity, and that users trying to abuse its system make up a tiny fraction of activity on its site. Amazon also uses sophisticated technologies like machine learning to combat bad users. They also pursue civil and criminal penalties. But people like Mr. Tai say that so long as Amazon will be governed by algorithms and artificial intelligence, there will be humans out there to trick the machines. You get this kind of problem where automation and、uh, will will lead to a lot of、uh, loopholes because their system right now is very vulnerable, and they don't do enough, and many sellers. Are getting hurt.